Hey guys, this is Jamin and Ashley Mills from The Handmade Home. We're super excited to be back with another edition of Coffee Talk. Ching! Like, it I makes stole it better. It from you. I stole yeah. it from you. But it makes it better ching if they actually Ching. hit, not, not the hands. My hand was in the way. That was the Wonder Twins. <laughs> that was a couple Ching. videos back. Ching. I thought it was that. Yeah. Okay. So we're excited, as I said, to be back. Today we're going to tackle the issue of organization around the house. For some reason, it's something that we love to tackle with each season. I feel like as each season starts to change, it's something that we like to take on because our nesting instincts take over a little bit, and it's something fun to kind of... <laughs> All I know is that I'm going like this and like this. <laughs> <laughs> So with each changing season, we tend to see our nesting instincts kick in a little bit and we're like, oh, we gotta get our act together. But we do, we are kind of falling into our new systems in our new house because we relocated um, a year ago, officially, moved into our new house. So for the first few months, it was all about just cleaning up and trying to get things put away. And a lot of it has to do with the seasons and what we're taking on and where we are in our life. Yeah, so today, what we want to do is share some of our tips and even a lot of our top freebies uh, to help you get organized in your space and around your home and hopefully be able to involve your children and your spouse in the whole process as well. So you guys are a lot like us. Like I know that life can get crazy and out of control and these are just some practical tips that we want to cover. Yeah. Um, what we want to start with number one is, do you want to go? I won't sure. do the drum roll. No drum even roll. Even though there. I did it anyway. So the first one uh, and probably the most obvious thing for everyone is this. It's simply purge all the things and that's a lot easier to say than it is to actually do sometimes because one you got to find the time for but then two what we find is you'll get into the actual purging a lot of times and emotions get involved and you start wondering am i going to use this or am i going to need it and that almost that nesting from the world war ii kind of mentality of well we might use that might have this scrap piece of tin that i can use somewhere down the line when the reality is you'll probably lose it and never find it again um, comes into play and so what we want to talk about is, well, you've got to purge and understand what does your family actually need and what are you just holding on to out of guilt? Yeah, and I have to say, I think that for us personally, we learned that the hard way when we first started. You know, we were looking at our life from survival mode with three toddlers basically coming into this when we first started to change our lifestyle a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it became a challenge because we weren't really focused on purging things. It was just, let's get it all organized. Well, we learned the hard way. You can't just keep reorganizing things because you have too much of it. I think that it's easy to get overwhelmed with too many items in your house. Yeah, it's the saying that uh, less is the new more. Uh, it's the idea that we don't have to fill our lives with all this stuff, uh, but the less we have, a lot of times, maybe even the happier we are uh, with stuff. And so sometimes, sometimes that starts with purging the life we have and getting some things out of it that are causing us stress. Um, a lot of times your playrooms, your bedrooms or whatever are stressing you out so much because you don't have places to put stuff sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and there may be nothing you can do to that room to change it. And the really simple change is, well, just get rid of some of it because do you really need, you know, 12 of the same thing in various shades? And the answer is normally no, you don't. We actually have an entire series on this on our site. It's called the Lazy Gal's Guide to Purging. Yes. Or just simplifying, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since I've touched on that one. But um, it's an entire series and it just talks on different tips and tricks and things that we think work. We even break it down with free charts that you can download. If you're a list person like me, um, you can look at to help you get through the process. And some of our top tips for purging would be what, Jamin? Where would you start just off the top of your head? Uh, I think the, the first thing you've got to do is uh, find things that you've used within, say, the last three months and just set those aside because you know you're using those. Anything probably from that date back, you need to really evaluate, do I need this in my life? Um, is it going to cause me more stress to keep it or am I ever going to find it? One of the big problems I have is I'll try to keep something thinking I'm going to use it but then I never can find it when I need it, so I end up having to buy it anyway. So I've kept all this junk, and I've had to buy this, and then I've got double as much of everything. Um, and so, Which brings us to, I think, recognizing patterns in your life. I think that we all are creatures of habit, and we fall into habit, and nothing can reflect more on you than when you live with someone else, and they point that out to you. So I didn't realize I'm what I call a stuffer. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Which means I love clean surfaces and a clean house, but sometimes I start to freak out and my anxiety takes over when I see a space that isn't clean and I just want things put away mm -hmm. and I don't want to deal with it right away. And so that really doesn't help our organization issues Not at all. all. No, no. Yeah. 
there are, there are often times uh, that actually will just take things and stuff them in a drawer. But, but the upside to it is I've become very good at understanding her stuffing habits. And now I can actually there's a true find pattern. stuff. There's, there's, a true there's pattern. an absolute pattern. She will lose something and say, I just had this and it just got stuffed somewhere. And I'll know exactly where it is. Um, it's quite amazing the pattern that is there. It's like some kind of wildlife thing you put in there about whales. You're right, a doctoral <laughs> study on stuffing. Yes. So, um, recognize your patterns. Start with things you have used in the past three months versus things that you haven't. And also, I think that a lot of people get caught up on the emotional side of things. And that's usually where the questions come up from our readers. How do you deal with that? I would say that with baby clothes, I was so sentimental that I wanted a few things set aside for my kids. So I, and this might be extreme, but I enlisted, enlisted? I prescribed, I, what's the word? I'm not sure what you're looking for here, but it's like I need to go to the pharmacy and get some drugs. <laughs> and maybe sign up for the military. It's been a long day. I decided to sign up for the military. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna enlist somebody. That's typically what you have been, so. I decided to assign one, one Tupperware container, a small one per kid. And I just wanted to be able to give them a few things because I, I tend to be sentimental. Two dangerous combinations that I have is that I'm kind of an artist at the core, designer, and so I'm always holding on to like supplies and stuff. And, and I am very reformed in my habits. You are. You must You're much say. better. The but 12 with, steps about. But with the kids, I did, I did tend to get a bit um, attached to like their clothes and stuff. So I only allowed a few pieces and whatever would fit in the Tupperware box was what I could, could keep. Other than that, I would recommend just taking photos of some of the things that you really want to remember. I mean, chances are you're not even going to go back and look at the photos. But I do find myself stumbling upon some old things and I'm like, oh, I remember that. You know, and it's, it's nice. It's a nice little trip down memory lane. And, and then that helps you part with it more easily. I think it's, I think it gets easy to assign um, emotions to yes. inanimate objects. It does. Very easy. And I think keeping in mind too, um, and there's, there's various levels of stuff that you need to purge and get rid of. Uh, but even think about yourself in relation to your own parents and maybe stuff they held on to you and they're trying to box up and give to you. I mean, you want that stuff from your childhood. Um, most of us, most people I talk to, they don't want it. They fight their parents about keeping it in their house because, well, they don't have room for it and they really don't want it. I actually so, an article that that's a generational thing now. Yeah. In the past, it was handed down because that was how people perceived and received things. And now we're part of an IKEA generation. And in a way, it's kind of sad, but in a way, it's freeing because we don't want stuff weighing us down. Yeah. So. so, yeah, just keep that in mind as you do it, too. You don't want to pass that burden home to your children uh, or even to yourself a few years from now. The second way that we recommend when it comes to organization in your home would be think through your storage spaces and how they're actually functioning. So you have your main living areas of your home and those are pretty. It's the form versus function philosophy behind design. You want a space that not only is beautiful, but functions just as beautifully for you and your family. Yeah, I think the question is, what can you do to change the space that you have or you've been given? Uh, how can you deal with that? And each person is a little bit different. You know, what works for one person or what fits one space or home isn't gonna work or fit another space or home. And so kind of each to their own uh, when it comes to all of that. Um, an example of looking at your spaces, it's really something that we're doing now with our basement rehab. We are truly having to look at our basement and how each space can be used for the most viable real estate. Downsizing has really made us think about our house and how we use it in different ways. Our last house did that as well because we moved in and then this and then this the, the real estate market it crashed and we were there and I feel like it can be easy to buy into that American lie that we all need more we need more square footage more areas and we found um, that it was a challenge but we really enjoyed being content for over a decade in the house. One of the changes that we made was we took our very large master closet and turned it into a family closet. It was so big that we took it and just transformed it into cubbies and a really functional space. Now that's not for everyone, clearly. We, ha we even had some people call it weird. <laughs> I mean, you know, to each their own. But it truly freed up our kids' closets in their bedrooms so they could use that for toy storage because we didn't have a playroom. We just used it for other things. And so we ended up using one bedroom and turning it into something else. And it's just a way to start looking at things in a different way and start making your spaces truly work for you. Yeah, and another change we made in that home as well is we took an existing pantry and just gutted it out and redid the shelving so that it fit more of what we wanted and the style we wanted to have and how it would fit. Kind of what was our typical things to buy or to store uh, in our pantry. And it really made a difference in 
how it was uh, cleaned up and organized has allowed us to see a little bit better of what all was in there so we weren't duplicating stuff in the grocery store. We weren't and, over purchasing. Yeah, we weren't over purchasing. We going back. We didn't feel as wasteful anymore. Yeah, so there's a little bit of investment up front, but in the long run it was saving us money from not over purchasing stuff. It's little things like that where you can really start to think through your systems and how they're serving you and what you can do to revise that and make it work better for your family. Yeah. Um, another really interesting thing that we've done with our children is that they have a room that, in this house for now, we don't know how long that will last. We're in the process of evolving. And I, I think there's a lot to be said about letting your home evolve with you, but they are all in a shared space right now. They all three have what we call the sleeping room and it's where they sleep and they don't mind it at all. No, and it's crazy. It's, to a lot of people, it's this very weird kind of novel idea, but it's one that was very prevalent uh, up until just a few years ago, really, where people were sharing spaces together. Children were sharing spaces together and very happy doing it. And so I don't think you have to buy into the lie that you need to assign a kid for each room in the house where they all need their own room so they can be very happy living together. It's just another example of being comfortable in your own house, mm -hmm. being comfortable whatever, with whatever that looks like for you, and really just enjoying your home for what it is yeah. and being okay with what it is. Yeah, absolutely. And so we, you know, we just kind of encourage you to rethink the spaces you have, how will they function the best for you. Mainly don't buy the lie, uh, the American lie that bigger is better uh, or the bigger will buy you more happiness. Uh, you know, you look to uh, across the ocean, the Europeans, and see the houses they live in, they're handed down from generation to generation and sometimes multi-generation people living in one house. And, uh, you just kind of wonder if they own to something with some of the stuff they're doing and the way they're organizing their lives. And so there's a lot to be learned uh, from other cultures as well. The third point that we want to bring in today is kind of similar to our last point, but in a more micromanaging way of looking at it, I guess, when it comes to your house. So when you think of your spaces, that would be a macro way. And this is going to be the tiny nuances that go on in your home, for lack of a better phrase. Yeah, almost what are you doing with kind of each corner of that space? So it would be, don't be afraid to integrate new systems if the old ones aren't working. So you can look at your spaces overall, but then you should look at how you're using those spaces. Obviously, if you change um, one master closet into a family closet, that's a great look of looking at it. But then within that, are you using baskets to contain each child's clothing? Are you using labels in different ways? What can you do to change it up to make it work? And if it's not working, don't just fall into old habits. Don't be afraid to mix it up. I actually printed these out to show you guys today because I'm such a nerd, but this is something that really helped us in our closets and we're using them now with our own kids. These are clothing labels. We have, you want to, you want to Yeah, I'll play Vanna. You Vanna, the small ones. Yeah. Shirts. Here are the big ones and the small ones. Um, we even have blank ones that you can fill in on our site. You can even laminate them and then mount them to a, to a basket or a drawer or anywhere that you can really use them. So we've got pants, pajamas, shirts, basically any combo that you can think of. These are all free printables on our site. Um, it can kind of be a game changer with letting your kids be a little more self-sufficient around the house. They can't use the excuse of, I don't know where things go anymore because we hear that a lot and this kind of cut that off a little bit and they found themselves taking initiative. Yep. And so the same room thing with another room we had in the old house, we had a designated area for them to uh, share for playing and video games, TV watching and all that. And we built them this nice little cubby, cubby and bookshelf, but then the question is, well, what are they gonna do? They're just gonna throw stuff in there. And so then it's just this cubby that's completely organized. So we created these other labels uh, so again, they had no excuse but to know where to put stuff and to hopefully get it back in the right spot or when they didn't, they could switch it up and get it to the right spot. Simple stuff like puzzles, blocks, you know, Mr. Potato Head parts, doll clothes, tools, superhero costumes. We have a little bit of everything. Yeah. I think there's over, are there 25 of these? Something Maybe like more. That, yeah. yeah, there's more and, than that. And so this is part of what we're talking about, getting the whole family involved with it. It shouldn't be just uh, the parent's responsibility to get things organized, but the kids, if given direction and shown what to do very clearly, should be able to pitch in and help and hopefully reduce that stress in your own life. Mm -hmm. And the third thing that we wanted to show you guys today is our free planner. It, we've been doing this since how long? I think 2013 was the first one. <laughs> Okay, so I'm such a nerd. Jamie makes fun of me because I am old school. If you're anything like me, you're gonna love me. If you're like Jamie, you're gonna think I'm crazy. Wait, let's clarify here. I'm not against the planner in any way whatsoever. <laughs> what I do not understand is that we're in this day of technology where you can keep your entire calendar on your phone and it's great to have the planner to 
you know, be able to write more down and kind of have that visual thing. But it's the refusing to put alerts in your phone to remind okay. you. Okay. Anyway, cutting that off. Are we done now? I'm gonna no, it's a soapbox for me. Yeah, clearly it's a sore spot. He gets really mad. <laughs> but I have this planner. You know, you can put in your name on the front. I have a little bit of everything. We even have inspiring quotes with hand lettered art by me, hand painted art. Um, we even have some of our favorite accessories on our site that we love to pair with them. We have two different sizes, A4 and A5. And then I, I even use it in my own way in, in combination, kind of like with a sketchbook kind of set up, but then um, the different sizes in combo together. There are over 200 files. You can pick out whatever pattern you like, customize it to however you use it best. And this is just an example because we use it in a different way. Yeah, and it's probably uh, one of the greatest you know things on the site as far as freebies because there are so many files and so many different ways to customize it. And uh, you can finish out this year with last year's planner and start fresh with this next one. And uh, we put them out every year and they're just great. And they're absolutely free. So be sure to check yeah. out that link. We'll be listing it below along with all the others so that you can utilize some of these items yeah. and even some tutorials for the toy cubby and the family closet if you're interested in some of that. Yeah. So today was uh, just a quick little uh, session about how to get organized in the home, organization around the home, how to involve the family. And we hope you kind of picked up some new uh, keys to helping that take place, uh, looking at purging all the things, uh, which is my favorite part of all of everything. I, I'm the burn all burn the it, things. burn it all. Um, just kidding, we donated to people in need. And we did. He doesn't burn it. The second thing would be, think through your storage spaces and how they're functioning. So throughout your house, you know, you don't have to follow the rules. Like if you're in our old house, another great example would be our dining room. We finally ditched the dining room and decided to make it a homeschool room for our kids. We homeschooled for three years and it was the perfect space. I really miss that space. It's one of my all time favorites. Yeah, it was a very great space. Um, and then of course, third one was, uh, don't be afraid to integrate some new stuff uh, for that micro level of organization. Uh, with the cubbies and the labels and all that. All the little things that can help your children take initiative and it can be more of a team effort for your family. So that is our, is this our third edition of Coffee Talk? This is the third edition of Coffee Talk. I say the third time is the charm. Hopefully this time Bing. is better. You didn't do it. I didn't. Let's try it one more time. I'm scared to go. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in guys and we hope to see you soon.